Okay, so carrying on with part IV or part four, we've got this electron and it's getting fired in between these two plates. It's got this initial X component to its velocity. It's getting repelled away from the bottom or attracted to the top, but it's due to the electric field that's present between the positive plate and the negative plate. And what we said previously was that we know how long it takes for the charge to traverse these two plates, that is to get from one side to the other side, as it travels at its constant x velocity. And in that time, it gets deflected vertically upwards. And we found out how far it gets, de it's gets deflected vertically upwards. It gets deflected from this original height up to this final height. So we found a delta dy. We figured out how long it takes for it to go from one side of the plates to the other side of the plates as it travels horizontally. Okay? We know that because it's a constant acceleration upwards and not horizontal, it's going to travel a parabolic path. And as it exits the two plates, we assume with no electrostatic force, it's going to continue off in a straight line because gravity will, will have virtually no effect on it because it's such a tiny, tiny mass. Okay? So that's what we know so far. We want to find out what the exit velocity is in the y direction when it gets to this other side. And so again, following the rules of kinematics, in the y direction, we know the acceleration in the y direction to be, uh, what was it again? 1.758 yeah. times 10 to the power of 13 meters per second squared upwards. That's for the whole time that it's going between, or that's traveling between these two plates. We know, uh, well, we know delta dy now. We know that delta dy is equal to 2.99 seven times 10 to the power of negative six meters. We converted it to micrometers before, but let's leave it in meters now just for convenience sake. Um, we know that V1Y is equal to zero meters per second. The reason I'm throwing down all these values about travel in the Y direction is because, again, we're trying to find the final velocity in the Y direction, that is V2Y for the time between the plates, for the final velocity between the plates in the y direction, okay? Is there any uh, other information that we know for this travel in the y direction? Time. Time. Time, beauty. Always useful. How long is it traveling? So delta t, we said before, was equal to 5.84 times 10 to the power of negative 10 seconds, or not long at all, okay? What's a good equation that we, we know from kinematics that could help us to zero in on the final velocity in the y direction? Galen? Okay. From that, that old fashioned equation, A equals delta V over delta T. Just sort of rearrange to get V2 all by itself. Is there another formula that would work? Sure, we could say V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2A delta D. I bet you there's other ways you could figure it out as well. Let's go with the, the first one that was suggested. I think it's the simplest. We don't have to square anything that way. But you know, there, there's plenty of ways to get to the destination. That's the important thing to notice. Um, so V1, we said, is equal to zero. So that simplifies that term out almost immediately. We know that the acceleration, 1.758 times 10 to the 13 meters per second. We know delta T is 5.84 times 10 to the negative 10 seconds. And Martha, you have the answer? No, I'm not. 10,266. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Same. All right, and then, and then we'll get to Martha's answer or question. Okay, 1.027 <laughs> times 10 to the power of 4 meters per second, according to Sam. And Martha, what was your question? Um, so with this kind of problem, we don't have to assign like a positive or negative for up or down because we just sort of assume because we know like, the, like, the field's going a certain way. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the question of whether we need to assign a direction as being the positive direction or a negative direction for up or down is like totally valid. But what I'm trying to do is not introduce new confusing ideas because we're talking about positive and negative charges. And then to also talk about positive and negative directions is definitely valid. I just don't want to confuse you with too many positives and negatives. But yeah, it, it, it would be appropriate to define a positive and negative direction. I'm I'm not going to be overly uh, critical of it in this case because we're just getting introduced to the idea of projectiles in the presence of positives and negative charges. Okay? So, it, no, you're right. That is more appropriate. All right. So that's IV. You want to guess what I could ask for V? No. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? 
Final velocity, that would be like a VI, but I'm, I'm only going to go to V, okay? So here's V. Part V says, what is the angle of deflection as it exits the plates? Yeah, the direction for the final velocity relative to the horizontal. Okay. What's the angle of deflection? We found the, the distance that it's deflected previously in part uh, III. I want to find the angle of deflection. Now, there's a couple of ways that you could figure out the, the angle of deflection. I want to focus on the velocities. So the final velocity in the y direction we already, we already have, V2y is equal to 1.027 times 10 to the power of 4 meters per second. We said that V2x will be the same as V1x, and V2x, therefore, is going to be equal to 1.027. Oh, my goodness. Does it happen to also be 1.027? Yeah. Oh, well, that's... Yeah. Well, 1.027 times 10 to the power of, what was it? 8. Well, don't let the fact that they're both 1.027 confuse you. It, it's just like a, an unhappy coincidence. V2y and V2x. We have the values. Don't get too upset about the fact that the numbers happen to be the same, the coefficients in front of the scientific notation. That's, that's not uh, some rule or something like, like that. 0 0.005 degrees. It's going to be a tiny angle anyway. So we're saying that we know that the V2x value, we know the V2y value. We want to find out what the deflection angle theta is. Which trig ratio do you like? Sine, tan, or cos? Tan. Tan. So theta is going to be equal to tan inverse of the opposite over the adjacent. So V2y over V2x. And if we sub in our values of V2y equals this, V2x equals that. Ryan, what did you get? Uh, 0 0.005729577. Say it again. 0 0.005729577. Yeah. 577. OK. 6. Uh, degrees. So, oh my gosh. Five, five, six, five or six one thousandth of a degree. This is not that much of a deflection. What could we do to make it deflect more? Yeah? Well, if we shorten this distance, it's going to have less time to get deflected. So that would make it deflect less. How can we deflect it more? Yeah. Increase the voltage in the plates. OK, so I could increase the voltage between these two plates, there, thereby increasing the electric field intensity. And if I increase the electric field intensity, that would incre increase the electrostatic force, pushing it upwards harder. Yeah? Put these plates closer together. That would decrease the R value between them. That increase the electric field intensity again. Yeah? Increase the distance. So make these plates not 6 centimeter plates, but maybe like 12 centimeter plates. OK. That would double the time. That would, that would mean that the electron had more time to have the force exerted on it. Is there anything we could do other than changing these plates? What about the plates that got this thing up to speed in the first place? They make it slower. If it went slower, it would spend more time between these two plates. It would have more time to get deflected vertically, right? So maybe we could decrease the voltage on the acceleration plates. There's lots of variables we could use here, lots of ways we could control the, the degree to which this thing gets deflected. Okay.